This week's episode of Weekly Tech Update is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download at audibletrial.com slash WTU. There are now well over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Windows Phone, or your Kindle. Good day there and welcome to episode number 344 of Weekly Tech Update for February 9th, 2016. In this episode, we are discussing 5 billion Facebook users, Windows 10 is number 2, and Amazon wants to get physical. Locations. Stay tuned for those stories and more here on your Weekly Tech Update. Man, summer is come. The groundhog is, well, maybe the groundhog doesn't know what he's talking about, but it is warm. We had like, what, three weeks of a winter, broadcasting from a very, very balmy BCC HQ South. I'm Benjamin Hyde. And broadcasting down the road from the even warmer BCC Hardware Souther, I'm Jason Schneider. My goodness, man, it was, well, I'll talk metric here for a minute. It was 15 Celsius today here, which uh, for those of you that speak American, that's going to be about 60, yeah, about 62, 63 Celsius in Canada. In February. In February. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, some, something's wrong. Something's wrong. We're, we're going to pay for it later. Oh, yeah. But yeah, no, it's, uh, we're going to get 10 feet of snow. <laughs> it could happen. I'm driving through the mountains tomorrow. I'm heading out west visiting my folks. So I'm That's sure. when it's going to happen. It's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. We're going to get into an avalanche again. It happened once before. It's going to happen again. It'll be fine getting out there. It's going to be coming home. Yeah, probably. Yeah, nice 20-hour drive. <laughs> no, oh, geez, man. I hope not. Oh, well, either way, we've got winter tires on. Uh, we'll, we'll be Why? Good. We'll, make, well, exactly. I should put my, should think, put my racing slicks on. I think summer tires would be more appropriate. I need to put my slicks on for the for the trip out there. Yeah. There we go. Either, either way, a um, few interesting stories this last week. Not not tons of news, but there's actually some good stuff. Um, well, there's, <laughs> there's some good stuff and there's some not so good stuff. It depends who you are. It depends who you are. If you're Mark Zuckerberg, things are looking up. Oh yeah, no, he's smoking something good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, he he figures um, that by 2030, uh, so we're still looking at a ways off. I'm not a mathematician, but that's about 14 years. Uh, he's he's claiming or expecting five billion Facebook users. Now, currently, the population of the planet is seven billion ish. Right. So he figures that, that, well, of course, with population growth, I mean, projected population is supposed to be around 10 billion on the planet if if everything keeps on going the way it is. So we could be looking at half of the entire globe is connected to Facebook. I don't think so. That's a a scary, that's a scary thought. Well, it is. And of course, what they're trying to, to leverage is the way that Facebook is trying to roll out internet across the globe to make people connected and of course he assumed that, that every tribal elder uh, and, and person in every tribe is going to use the internet provided by Facebook solely or primarily for Facebook well why wouldn't you <laughs> exactly it's uh, I, I love that there was two seconds of silence there because yeah it's like that that's not all people do on the web I mean there's definitely a very small percentage of people that Facebook is their source of news, their source of entertainment, their source of communication, but those people are not that many. Uh, well, I think, yeah, no, there's maybe it's bad, but there's part of me that just wants to see Facebook just like implode. Yeah. Well, the, as Facebook gets more political and starts to censor more and more political things, I think more and more people that I've been talking to, uh, both in the U S and in Canada here, of course, globally, that's a very small percentage of Facebook usage, but, uh, North Americans are getting pretty disgusted by the way, I mean, Facebook censorship, right? You post well, something. Censorship's good, right? It protects you from dangerous stuff. Exactly. Like, like thinking. <laughs> so I don't know. Well, I mean, but, but Facebook will do that for you. So it's good, right? Well, th- exactly. Yeah, no. I, and because I don't of that, I, I, I think people are going to get fed up with Facebook long before it hits 5 billion people. I think people are going to get fed up with Facebook long before 5 billion and 2030. Yeah. I mean, social networks don't live that long as a rule. I mean, none of them have so far. I don't think Facebook is the one that's going to that's going to defy every odd ever. Right? I think anytime somebody's making money on something um 
because I mean, everyone who goes on Facebook, it's it's not a free service. This isn't Mark Zuckerberg's, you know, um, gift to humanity. Right. This is Mark Zuckerberg knows that every single person who signs up has more money in his pocket. Absolutely. This isn't this isn't a uh, humanitarian effort. This mm-hmm. is a put more money in my pocket effort. Mm-hmm. So, so my, I mean, yeah, my prediction out of those 5 billion uh, users, though, we're going to see 4 billion of them that are fake accounts. Well, and that's, that's the thing is there's, I mean, I think there's even, I would say maybe North America just because they've been exposed to Facebook for longer and maybe there's a little more technological expertise, let's say. I think that even in North America, I think their active number of users is probably going down or... I mean, there's still going to be a high percentage of people who are on Facebook all the time. I mean, there's just people who, I mean, it's, that's where, what they do when they're on the computer is they're just looking at Facebook. They're looking on their phone and everything. But I think there's more and more people who are just sick of social media, sick of, it's not a way to connect. It's a way to basically. It's a way to disconnect. I mean, Facebook. I, in well, it's a way opinion. to, it's just a way to make someone else money. It's just a way of, I mean, they're not. Everything you do on there is just being advertised to. Like it's, it's just frustrating. Like there's not, it's there's really not that much redeeming qualities about it. Th- well, there's and I not. Think more I mean, people are noticing that. And yeah, I mean, of course, we're we are, are not the the main demographic of Facebook users anymore. Um, we're we're much more cynical than we used to be, and and you know we're not mainstream users. You and I, uh, Jason, we're not. We're kind of more the the cynical kind of hands off let's let's see really what they're doing because we analyze things right that that's the problem with being analytical you look yeah. at things and you don't take them just at face value you look and see why they're doing it and that puts a either a, a good you know feeling good vibe or a bad taste in your mouth and you know mark zuckerberg has done enough weird stuff and, and facebook is is censorship and they're political enough that i don't have much use for them i mean i still you know, it's part of the business model for BCC hardware and part of our social stream, so I use it. But as far as personal stuff on Facebook, I mean, I never did much personal, and it's got significantly less. So, I mean, out of the 5 billion accounts, I, I don't see that as being 5 billion users like they're claiming. I mean, maybe 5 billion accounts because someone's going to have, you know, an account for their their business downstairs office and then their business marketing team is going to have an account and their and their business i mean in their north american business is going to have an account which i mean they do you look at facebook uh for instance thermal take has got a thermal take usa account they've got a thermal take europe account they've got a thermal take germany account you know so that's three or four accounts for one company and, and that's how they're going to hit their you know five billion accounts but it's not active users and it's not human beings like five billion human beings that are they're involved at all. Yeah. I, I think the whole, the whole free model is, is probably what's got them to, you know, a billion and a half users or whatever they're claiming to be at. But I think it's also come to a point that you just, I don't know. I think people are just sick of the advertising, sick of the, they're showing you what they want you to see, not what you yeah. wanted to see. It's what they think that you need to see. And I think there comes a point that you know, the the, big, the biggest thing, everyone's like, oh, I like to see the pictures. I like to see the pictures of the people I don't see all the time. You know, they post pictures of whatever, their cat, their dog, their kids, their whatever. You know, that's kind of nice to see. I think there eventually comes a point where people just pay for a service that's a dollar a month and you can share all your pictures between all your friends, like much like Instagram. But then you, you get control. You're not being advertised to. You're not, you know, random people from around the world can't see it. I mean, yeah. I, I think eventually it kind of gets to that. I, I think the sharing of information is great, but when you're doing it with a company that's basically profiting every time you post anything, I, I think, I hope, well, maybe I hope people are eventually going to catch on to that and uh, kind of take their data back into their own hands because that's really what's happening is, you know, everybody talks about, oh, identity theft, oh, you know, it's all the cyber stock, all this stuff. Well, that's because it's all free. Yeah. I mean, exactly. you got to, you got to, you know, we've, we've got to this point where we share everything, but I think now it's like, we have to almost take the data back. You have to, you have to take your data back and you have to be, maybe have a little more control. Cause right now with Facebook, you, you have yeah. 1% control. Yeah, no, exactly. No, I, I agree. So, I agree. Well, so 
So maybe, uh, yeah, I obviously we're, we're probably cynical on this, but there's there's really a part of me would just like to see Facebook blow up in spectacular fashion. That would really make me happy because <laughs> you're mean. Well, I, I agree. But I think a lot of people mean. are thinking that. No, I, I think so, too. Right. I mean, there, it, it's ran its course. Um, it's got too big for its britches. It's now forcing stuff upon you that that. You know, as far as the media, as far as what they want you to view, like you said, I mean, there's stuff, I mean, and, and you have to sit there. I go, and even this whole timeline thing that, because I, I browse Facebook, I mean, occasionally enough that I like to see what's new, but Facebook keeps changing. You can choose for, for your newsfeed, whether it's top stories or most recent. I change it all the time when I go there to top stories and it's supposed to save it, and it does maybe the next time you open Facebook, but after that, it goes back to top stories again because they're shoving down my throat what they want me to see, not what recently happened. It's because somebody's paying to promote the page, and exactly. they have to actually show it to people, so exactly. it's like, oh, whoops, we changed your settings. That's, oh, gosh, that, that yeah. I, I, that, that little thing there just drives me nuts, and that's just indicative of the whole model. Oh, yeah, like, I mean... The one I get now is the Liberal Party of Canada. Like, they must be paying a lot of money because <laughs> that ad is coming up constantly. Yep. Now, the, even, the funnier thing is, if you really want to get a good laugh, is read the comments on these paid posts, you know, these paid promote posts. People, like, I'm, I'm obviously not the only one because people must be seeing these all the time because yeah. there, there are some hilarious comments on there. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, exactly. Anyways, it's... Know. But that's the thing is it's not... It's not a true news source because they're getting paid to put articles higher up. Exactly. That's not news. That's promotion. Yeah. That, that's just commercials. That's commercials. Well, that's the thing. For... It's, it's, it's commercials that are masquerading as news. And maybe, you know, I guess, obviously, if you're watching the news on TV, you're going to get commercials as well. But, and maybe even there, wow, well, there's like actually probably lots of news stories that are, you know, paid content or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. But, but I think yeah. people are getting kind of tired of that. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah they are. Absolutely. Unfortunately, a lot of people can't tell the difference either, but... Uh, and that is also true. A- anyways, well, those people probably aren't listening to the podcast. <laughs> right. Exactly. They just have their, their head in their proverbial hole in the sand and, and they're happily going through life. But yeah, I, I think this trend of this sharing trend, this, you know, everyone's got to be connected to everybody. I think that trend is kind of hitting its peak and maybe it's already on the downhill, but I think people are kind of realizing that maybe sharing everything is a it isn't the best thing. Yeah, well, I, I agree. But I agree. Um, yeah, so so Facebook kind of pushes what they want. Um, and Microsoft has also made a switch here recently to start pushing what they want. And what they want is you to upgrade to Windows 10. And it used to be an optional update, an optional update through your Windows uh, updater. Uh, and now it is now a recommended update. So if you're not paying attention and you go sit there and, and manually install Windows updates and you don't go through the list and uncheck Windows 10, if you're a Windows 7, Windows 8 user, you're going to get it whether you like it or not. Of course, you can roll back, but they're really, they're really pushing it. And I mean, I, I don't know if I agree with that, you know, as far as making that change to to try and kind of almost trick people. Just un, un, unbeknownst to them, they will be installing Windows 10 if they wanted to or not. And uh, that could be a bad thing. Yeah, I mean, nobody wants to be forced into anything. So that's, I think, the biggest pushback. I, I don't necessarily think it's because Windows 10 is a, is a bad operating system. No. Like, you know, if we were back in the Vista days, then it's like, oh, hey, wait, your XP is expiring. You know, you get Vista. You know, people would be, you know, freaking out. <laughs> um, yeah. But, but this is more just the, well, we should, have the ch- we should have the choice. But on the second, you know, on the other hand, it... They're trying to move you to the latest operating system so that you're keeping updated, that you're, you know, you're able to use all the features, you're, you know, all your software will work. Like they're they're not they're not making money off you. Like it's not like, oh now oh, you're they, in Windows they, 10, put in your credit card and pay us fifty dollars. I totally disagree with that. The what? B- out of the box, Windows 10, the the amount of data that Windows collects from you is far, far more invasive than what Facebook collects out of the box. You got to go read a guide and turn off all of the Windows suggested features if you don't want to give them every single thing you're doing. 
Um, yeah, it's just like you're giving them every single thing you do on Facebook. Every like you're no, giving them every right. single thing you do with every free service on the internet. That, that's right. And, and Microsoft does the same thing. I mean, so they are making money off you. They're not charging you for it, but they're still making a fortune off you unless you go and disable all your stuff. So I think as much as anything, as much as the security thing, or as much as the update thing, I'm going to go out here and, and be cynical. I'm, I'm going to be the crabby guy this week and say that the biggest reason face or Microsoft, Microsoft, Facebook, almost the same thing in this sense the biggest reason they're pushing you to that upgrade is because they want more of your data because 99 percent of windows 10 users don't disable the the spying i mean because windows 10 does spy on you you know with their their disclaimer is to make your windows experience better and it does i've got two windows installations one of them's turned off on, on one test rig one of them's uh on on my laptop and the experience is completely different and the one where they watch everything you do is a better experience, uh, but they're also watching everything you do. And that's what Microsoft wants is to know what everything you're searching for, um, what programs you're launching more. That way they can start spamming you with, with updates to Office. I mean, if you never launch Office, people that, that never run Office, they don't get the the you know the slider ads next to the clock with, hey, you should upgrade to Office 2016. I never get that update and the office I have office installed on, on both machines. I never get that reminder on my one rig with all the security stuff, uh, you know, disabled so that I, that Microsoft can't see me. But on my other system where Microsoft can see what I'm doing, they see I launch office or outlook multiple times a day. So almost daily now I get this offer to upgrade. And That's just them being helpful. What do you <laughs> play? Oh, come on. <laughs> Yeah. Microsoft, I mean, it's as much about making money by but giving... But they're, wa they're watching you in Windows 7 and Windows 8.1 by default, too. I Not not the way they do in this in Windows 10. There's been a lot of security firms that have, that have talked about the amount that Microsoft watches in Windows 10, and it's pretty impressive in, in not a good way. It, but whatever. Does, does it bother me as a consumer? No, because Microsoft actually was pretty upfront about what they're doing to make yeah. your Windows experience better. These companies that are sneaky about it, they tick me off. Microsoft. Well, yeah. yeah. You know, and really, you know, I don't think anybody wants anybody watching them. Um, yeah. I guess maybe it's yeah. hypocr hypocritical. I make fun of Facebook because I'm saying they're taking everything and they're, you know, watching everything you do. And then but but they're being Windows. sneaky about it though, right? That's yeah, not part of yeah. the, that's not part of their thing. And, and Google's the same way. Like Google Docs, Google uh, Gmail, even you know, where they basically read your email so they can market to you. I mean, yeah. I, I get that, right? And, and I I, they, but they said straight up, we're doing this to advertise to you. We're we're reading your mail, and you know that was Microsoft's big thing with Outlook. Oh, we never read your mail. I mean, they had the the whole advertising campaign, you know, that way. And they don't read my mail, but they also read everything else that I'm doing now with Windows 10. So, you know, because why? Because it's profitable. Well, it is profitable. And, and if they, they own up to it, said, they, they can increase the experience. You know, they can make sure that they can kind of look at your habits and kind of tailor your experience to your habits, which is, which isn't a bad thing, but yeah, it does, it does involve them watching everything you're doing. And it does. And, and, you know, Microsoft is pretty upfront about that, but people kind of overlook that. I mean, I think, again, that is the biggest reason they're giving it away for free and the biggest reason they're pushing you to upgrade now. Um, maybe from Windows 7, maybe they don't want to support that. But from Windows 8, I mean, that's a very current OS. There's nothing wrong with yeah, Windows 8. Yeah, but they don't want to support that either. I mean, they really want to be on this one operating system platform where yeah. everybody's everybody's standard. Yeah, no, I, I, I get that. I do, but... And there's there's a benefit for everybody being standard. There is, yeah, especially with universal apps uh, coming through more and more through Windows 10 and, and for all their platforms and stuff too. So, but so I guess, way. I mean, yeah, it's there, there's good and there's bad. And if you're... You want it all turned off? You can do that. It's not, it's not simple, but no, uh, it's not simple. But it's, I mean, yeah. If you don't want them to watch everything, there's, there's an option. Just never use Bing, and then, <laughs> or the, well, they'll watch anyhow. Well, yeah, pretty much. So, well, anyways, it's, it's kind of probably coming whether you like it or not. Um, you can, you can try to sit there with Windows XP and, uh, you know, resist change, but you're kind of getting left behind. Yeah. Well, you and know, overall, Windows 10 is pretty awesome. Yeah, well, no, I shouldn't say awesome. It's it's good. It's good. Yeah, it's good. I've never had any complaints. I mean, different people have had different issues. I've never had an issue yet with Windows 10, really. Like a yeah. couple, couple little peeves, but never an issue. No. So, um, 
You know who is having issues? Uh, Yahoo. They're having a, a few issues. They're laying off 15% what? of their workforce. Why? No. Well, Why apparently, would they do that? Well, they're not as popular as they once were. I still use Yahoo. Is that bad? No, not at all. I use Yahoo Answers. When I'm, when I'm feeling depressed or bored or just, just generally a little bit lethargic or melancholy, Yahoo Answers is amazing. Hmm. <laughs> you you search questions and people can users submit their own answers for it and it is comedy gold. Oh yeah, yeah, no, it's uh, probably not. Uh, I I wouldn't I wouldn't bet money on some of those answers. No, I I don't think those answers are are valid, but they're funny. Um, and just with their search, I mean Yahoo and and their other services, Yahoo's been struggling for a while. Um, and yeah, it's, oh, yeah. it's getting to the point where now. You know, the, the stock has fallen. The value of the company has dropped about fifteen billion since April. So just in under a year, they've dropped fifteen billion. That's that's tough. I think they're going to fire their CEO. I think they'll be looking for a new one. Yeah. So if you yeah, uh, which is probably about the tenth one in the last ten years, something like that. So if you need a a job, you're looking for a job. I mean, you could probably run Yahoo as good as their last CEO. Um, well, yeah, it couldn't be any worse. So send your resume in. Uh, Box one two three Yahoo Street. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, well, this this was recommended. There was a was it a was it a firm or there was somebody who had recommended basically that they lay off like half their people, fire their CA CEO, and pretty much get rid of everything that they're doing and just make money off their investments. Which they own a they own a uh, stake in Alibaba, which is making tons of money. Mm-hmm. They own a stake in Yahoo Japan, which is also making them lots of money. Uh, pretty much everything's making the money except for their actual business. And uh, <laughs> yeah. so they're they're going to try to cut That's 15% odd. of the people. They're closing offices in Dubai, Mexico City, Buenos Aires, um, Madrid, and Milan. So I guess some of these uh, destination offices will be closed, which probably makes sense. Yeah. It, it, yeah. They're weird. Um, it, it's – they just haven't done anything. Yahoo is a company – has not done anything other than invest in other companies. Well, but it's it's actually done well for them. That's the only reason they're still in business. If well, they didn't right. have these other uh, stakes, they probably would be uh, they'd probably be gone because every everything that they've tried, they're either way too late or they just don't do a good job. Um, you know, they yeah. were trying to get into original video content to to compete with the Netflixes, the Amazons, all this kind of stuff, and that was just a glorious disaster. Right. I was going to say a dog and pony show. It, it, they just burned money. They, they, they did. should just film themselves burning money and they probably would have <laughs> got more views. <laughs> they probably would have. Um, oh, geez. but I mean, they've, they do have some, you know, their tumblers. Um, they've got, yeah, like Yahoo Sports still is, is somewhat relevant, but yeah, they've also said, uh, during this whole cutback, Yahoo Games is now being shut down, which, um, I didn't you know, even know there was Yahoo Games. Oh yeah, man. they were. That was pretty big, ten, fifteen years ago. Oh man, I missed that. You you missed it. It was it was actually actually it was a pretty solid platform. A lot of it was just you know your chess checkers, you know card mm-hmm. games, stuff like that. Just like simple simple stuff. But it was actually very well, very well um, run. It was it was simple, but it you know it it worked. Um, so that's being closed down. So hopefully. Hopefully people have migrated from those and they can now play chess and checkers somewhere else. But right. <laughs> exactly. So they're gonna focus on search, email, and Tumblr, along with uh basically. No, they're gonna focus on making money on Alibaba Probably, and uh, yeah. Yahoo Japan. <laughs> Probably. Uh personally I like Yahoo Finance uh more so than Google Finance. Yeah, actually, um, yeah. I'll give I, them that. Yeah. I, I like I like that. Anytime I'm looking for stock prices or something, generally for weekly tech update when we're talking different things, it I I go to Yahoo because they're they, I, they, they nail it. I mean, they, they do some things good. They do some things even better than people, but they don't have that brand recognition anymore and they haven't innovated in anything other than, like you said, the investments that they've been making. So that doesn't... I'm, I guess I'm focusing on search. Why not? That's probably a pretty easy business to uh, to keep going with. Um, email. Don't think there are a lot of people using Yahoo email accounts anymore. A lot of people uh, on Craigslist do, but I don't trust any of them. <laughs> <laughs> Just, just saying. Huh. If you want a okay. good spam email, I'd, I'd, I'd go with Yahoo. It's the trusted oh, name good, and Craigslist. Good to know. <laughs> good to know. Yeah. But yeah, actually, Yahoo Sports, Yahoo Finance, Yahoo News actually isn't terrible either. So I mean, I don't, I don't know how it's going to make you lots of money. 
Yeah, but well, exactly. Right. I guess you you'll probably make more money it. on your Alibaba investment. Oh yes, I'm sure. But I'm sure. yeah, it, it's really it's going to be. It's not going to be too much longer before Yahoo just shuts down everything. I would think so. Yeah. Just yeah. Spin yeah. off. You know, spin off the Tumblr. Spin off some of these other things. Um, you're just an investment company. Um, it's just it's just a tech tech company just wasn't able to keep ahead of everybody and they got run over exactly exactly well um somebody who's actually getting left behind which is kind of odd in this side of the world in, in this thing is is intel is going to get left behind from google whoops so google is leaving intel behind like one of the world's you know fastest and, and best chip manufacturers um google's moving away that that well, was surprising well, it's it's interesting. Intel, as far as technology goes, Intel is one of these companies that has actually been able to stay ahead for forever, really. Yeah, exactly. And so they, they've they've really just they've been a company that's been able to innovate when they needed to innovate, and they've been always been able to stay a step ahead of everybody. Um, you know, AMD uh, made it really made a, a run at them for quite a few years there. They basically buried them, and now it's just been nobody's been able to keep up with them. But it seems Qualcomm might actually be the one that's able to take a run at Intel. And uh, the biggest reason they're doing that is because big guys at Google are seeing that there's actually value in moving to a Qualcomm chip. And uh, yeah, Google purchases uh, a few a few chips per quarter, uh, 300,000. So yeah, uh, no, they only no buy 1.2 million chips a year from Intel. <laughs> Google. Yeah, like for for servers and for their Google Fiber and for stuff like that, they're setting up 1.2 million chips a year sold to one company. I think you try and keep their business. Well, I'm sure they did, but Qualcomm is really able to do things for way less. Well, way way less money in chips, uh, way less power, um, yeah. and in great performance because not everything needs to have a screaming you know 16 32 core Xeon chip in it. Um, you can do a lot with these little eight core Qualcomm chips for for yeah. what they're doing. I mean, CPU well, and load a lot of it comes down to uh, power. I mean, power exactly. is expensive. Yeah, one point two million chips take a little bit of power. <laughs> yep. And, <laughs> and uh, uh, so Qualcomm, of course, is famous for their smartphone sales. Yep. Basically, everything that's not an Apple is using a Qualcomm chip. Uh, that's a one point eight billion unit sales uh, market. In a twenty or by twenty eighteen, it's supposed to be one point eight billion units. So uh, that's that's a I'm few. Probably currently with their market share, they probably move well over a billion units. Yeah, exactly. So which is which is nuts. Unbelievable. Uh, like unbelievable. it's just it's it's kind of it's actually kind of incredible. Qualcomm's kind of they almost came out of nowhere. Well, they did. I mean, they they were around and powering some of the first Android smartphones. Um, the very first uh, Samsung. No, well, the HTC One, yeah, the HTC One, the the first one, um, was powered by a a Qualcomm chip, and then the Samsung, the second gen one I went uh, had a Qualcomm Snapdragon, and ever since the Snapdragon, it's the whole Snapdragon line that the, has dominated um, yeah. everybody's smartphone. Really, I mean, Apple has their own. Um, and Samsung has their own in some, but even a lot of Samsung phones are running Qualcomm chips. Yeah. So it's, well, there's it's, some there's some mobile Intel chips as well. Yeah, MediaTek um, does some other ones too, and Intel does yes. some. Yep. So there there are other options, of course, but Qualcomm's really been able to kind of capture that that value and performance and power. They've been able to kind of been able to slide in there and do all three of those very well. Which that's kind of been, you know, for, especially in the mobile. I mean, you know, the MediaTek ones, it's cheap. But it does it have the performance? Yeah, probably. You know, not, not, not quite. Head no. to head. No. Um, and power. I mean, it's probably comparable. So then, you know, Qualcomm's the obvious choice. You know, Intel hasn't been able to do it on value. They've they've got some powerful chips for oh, performance, yeah, but the price isn't there. So yeah, you're Qualcomm running an Intel again. chip though. You're running exactly. an Intel chip. You're you're running an yeah. Intel chip. Oh yeah, and you know, as far as performance goes, Intel has some some great performance, and it's got but great it's battery price. life. And and but yeah, it's it's costing more per unit, right? Exactly. Yeah, so, when you when you're uh, making, you know, a, a hundred thousand devices a quarter. Well, even more than that. When you're making ten million a quarter. Well, exactly. Of of one particular device, saving an extra dollar and a half a chip is kind of important. It kind of adds up, <laughs> even <laughs> when you're saving a quarter on exactly. every. And you'll be saving CPU. more than that, switching from Qualcomm to Intel for sure. 
But there's so many things that a Qualcomm processor goes in. I mean, you know, even she's oh, yeah. took into routers and all that kind of stuff. Like they're just everywhere. Absolutely. You bet. Absolutely. So, so uh, I mean, good on them. I, I, I guess if you would ask me a couple of years ago, who wins the, you know, the desktop, the server market? I mean, it's like, well, probably Intel, you know, AMD doesn't really have a chance, but uh, it seems that like Qualcomm has been able to kind of slide into that market as well. And, and, uh, it probably won't be long before, you know, the HPs and Dells and Lenovo's and all that, you know, are yeah. producing a Qualcomm uh, desktop. Because, I mean, they make they make chips that are very cheap and, and a lot of, you know, workstations. You don't really need a 16-core Intel, you know, no. i7 processor. For, for you just that need cost. something that can run, you can run applications, run a database. Well, and for that's a workstation, man, for a workstation, I mean, you could probably put like probably like 10 eight core Qualcomm chips in it for a quarter or, or less of the price of a one Intel chip when it comes well, to like a desktop chip, right? And that's Qualcomm the thing is, chips I mean, you don't, are need, like, a, you like don't five, need a fancy eight, video bucks. card. You need enough to run a couple monitors. I mean, all of a sudden, so with, yeah, with de- when, you're not buying a when you're not buying a hundred dollar Intel chip, you're buying a $10 Qualcomm chip. All of a sudden now you can, instead of $200 works, cheap workstations, it's now well, I mean, I'm, $90. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm thinking like a workstation, like a graphics crunching workstation. I mean, you could have an 80 core chip in that sucker that would get way more done because that stuff is all like, it's just built for multi-threaded. There's more threads that it divides the workload evenly for processing, you know, video and for that sort of thing. And I guarantee you that the 80 cores of Qualcomm would outrun, you know, four cores, eight cores of Intel. Yeah. You know, and, and, but and even, even with for, a lot of the Intel cheap. stuff right now is you, you don't, you don't need cores. You don't need all this. Like you just really to run internet applications, to run, you know, right. some spreadsheets and stuff like that, y- you don't need a ton of power. That's right. I mean, that's why NVIDIA's Tegra's, you know, in in, uh, in uh, Chromebooks have done exceptionally well because it's a dirt cheap based off an ARM processor, you know, Qualcomm yep. type of type of idea um, that, that runs exceptionally well. Yeah. 192 so. core chip for $5. Well, and that's the thing is it's... <laughs> It's really a lot of this stuff. It's going to be the, well, it's all disposable technology. So right. if you can buy instead of, you know, it's a $400 cheap computer. Now you can get a $200 one. You know, you know, you're going to throw it out in two or three years. Exactly. So why exactly. why not? So I think that's, I mean, good on Qualcomm. I, I think as far as prices go, Qualcomm is probably going to be the big, the, uh, the biggest contributor to computing pricing dropping. I think so too. Yeah. Because they're just they're just quantity. It's and, just and they are quantity, powering. quantity, quantity. Cool. It's just they don't they don't want to sell. For, I don't. Well, maybe they do. I've probably they probably do, but they don't need to sell four hundred dollar processors like Intel. No, and Qualcomm is powering the Internet of Things, really. Oh yeah, I mean. Oh yeah, yeah, it, it, exactly. Because it is so cheap, you can put it in everything. Yeah. I mean, TVs, routers, every everything. Right. It's just dirt cheap. Yeah. Uh, next thing that uh, well, this is this is going into more and more well. More and more locations, more and more things. Is Amazon uh, is opening physical locations? Well, maybe this is the new trend because last week, well, you you told me we already yeah. talked about the story, but last week we talked that's about right. Circus City. Circus, Circus City, City is not back. Circus City. That's a different store. Don't go there. Circus City is yeah. Circuit City <laughs> is was the electronic store that then got bought by Tiger Direct. Has now been sold. And is now looking to come back and open a whole bunch of physical locations. That's right. Starting with 50 physical stores. Yeah. And well, Am- yeah, they, they want a 50 to 100 or 50 right. to 200 and, and then they're going to franchise, et cetera, et cetera. Open all these stores. Great idea. It's never failed anybody in the past. No, physical um, locations never get shut down. Including the original Circuit City who had too many locations, couldn't make money and the internet killed them. Uh, so anyways, the person who... The company who killed Circuit City was Amazon, right? And now they're deciding, well, maybe maybe Circuit City was onto something, and uh, Amazon is looking at opening as many as four hundred physical locations across the U.S. Four hundred locations, because I mean, let's face it, I mean, more overhead equals a better price for the customer, right? If you can hire a bunch of employees, pay benefits, uh, pay the power bill, have a brick and mortar store you're going to do far better than people because people don't like shopping on the internet. I mean, that was a thing for a couple that's, of years, but that, no, that's nobody, a fact. nobody shops on the internet anymore. No, no, no. It's too, it's too tough. It's, it's too, yeah, it's, it's not convenient. 
to yeah. to sit at home and, and shop online. That's 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 a pain. I mean, what what better than to get dressed, go pay too much money for fuel, put on your good pants or your uh, sweatpants, put, put good shoes. Yeah, exactly. Keep your sweatpants, put on shoes, drive good. like an hour through traffic, and yeah. go buy a book for five dollars more than you could have got it online delivered to your door. I mean, really, what are people thinking? Well, see now. I don't think opening physical locations is the greatest idea. But if anybody can actually make it happen, it's Amazon. It's, it is Amazon, because yes. They have they have all the infrastructure done. They do, yeah. I mean, they've got everything is set up. Opening a store is really actually quite simple oh, for them is. because they have they have all the all the uh, products they need to fill the store. They have the warehouses. I mean, they have everything. They've got a supply but, chain. They've got drones. It's all good. But you know something like this. There are there are some people who don't really necessarily want to buy everything online. They like to go in and kind of browse around. You know, look at especially as far as books go. You know, there's something to be said about going and kind of browsing around. And like, oh, this looks good because on the internet you kind of lose that. You you lose that. You know, being able to actually pick up a book. You know, read a couple pages and be like, oh, this looks interesting. Um, so as far as books go, they could really be onto something. But probably even more than that. You know, now they have a physical location to show off all their devices, you know, so their Kindle, not their yeah. Kindles. Yeah, the Kindles. Yeah, the Kindle. yeah. Their all Kindle, their Kindle their devices, fire, their... all of that stuff. Plus, you can probably ship pretty much anything from Amazon directly to the store, pick it up right you there, can. saves yeah. you shipping. And probably they're going to build all these stores in strategic locations where that if you place an order, they'll have it at the store for you within a couple hours because they're probably yeah. going to have a truck going back and forth between the warehouse and the store all day long. Yeah, I they, mean, they, Amazon could do it, but I think 400 stores uh, in the U.S. is a little, a little aggressive, and um, I don't know. Well, yeah, it it probably is a little bit aggressive, but I I think there's still enough markets that there well no there's still enough people that that want that physical experience, and I mean, I I don't know. I, I guess there's there's got to be enough money because I don't think Amazon's just you know looking for for something to blow money on. I mean, yeah, I think no, they've they done did their that research. With their Fire Phone. They 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 blew enough money with the Fire Phone. They don't need to blow any more. Well, year. that's true. Yeah, they, that, that they, Amazon doesn't win all the time. No, no, they don't. But uh, but you're predicting I mean, a win for Amazon here. I think they're going to do pretty well on this because they've got all the infrastructure there. Yeah. Um, you yeah, know, it's it's not that. like it's not like the chapters or whatever who have to build the infrastructure or, you know, have to have the separate infrastructure. And but I mean, Amazon's going to get you either way. Whether if you like going into the store, they got you. If you like buying it online, they got you. I I think it's a pretty low risk endeavor for them. Right. But right. I don't know. We'll right. we'll see. Um, I I mean, it's not going to be. There's not going to be a Amazon store in every strip mall in the in the US. Right. It's going to be very strategic. It, it is. So well, yeah. you think it's going to going to play out well for them? Um it could it could happen. One thing that uh could play out well for you actually better than you think is if you drop food, the 5 second rule is a real thing. This is this is good that you have uh science behind you now when somebody's yeah. like well, you're man, not going to eat that, are you? And you're like, yes, I am. It's five second rule. Exactly. Yeah. Mind you, dro is... dropping spaghetti on a carpet, I think that would, that's still not going to work out well. Well, he, there's <laughs> definitely the whole consistency uh, <laughs> debate. You know, if it's basically, if it's all sticky and it's a magnet, yeah, you might not want to eat it because it's, right. you can tell. But I mean, hey, dry <laughs> cookie. Yeah. Oh, I mean, well, dry cookie. I mean, other than in a public restroom, I'm going to pick that up and eat it, especially if it's a homemade cookie. Well, exactly. I mean, so that's, public but, restroom, not so much. I mean, I don't now care if science it's... is behind you. So if somebody, if if you do have some germaphobe going, like, really, you're gonna eat that cookie? I mean, you're just like science. Five <laughs> seconds. Well, look it up. Exactly. Um, and if you need to look it up, we'll put the show, uh, the article in the show notes. Um, but yeah, it's it's actually they did a they did a whole uh, study on this, and uh, yeah, you have to. It, Basically, it's the dry requirement is the is the, the, the dry requirement, is the yes. factor here. So right. if it's if Raw it's kind eggs, of wet, and you drop it on the ground. Not so much. It's gone. <laughs> exactly. Dry eggs, not so much. Dry eggs, yeah. like raw eggs. They don't pick them up. Don't try and use them. Basically, the five second rule works, and they said actually, you it's really almost thirty seconds. It is. So yeah, exactly. I mean, you don't even have to get into a hurry. 
Plus, a little bit of bacteria, not a bad thing. It's kind totally of like uh, totally it's true. kind of like getting your shots. <laughs> exactly. You, know, you put exactly. put a little bit of bad stuff in little, there. A little bit your of body it. fight that. Right. You got all these antibodies. It's it's all good. Right. So. Um, that did not work out real well for Chipotle. Um, mind you, they had like the 10 minute rule in the kitchen. Well, yeah. And the, the, the 10 minute yeah. rule, it does not apply in Mexican restaurants. There was a lot of E. coli. <laughs> <laughs> there was. Yeah. Well, Hey, uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> th- that's fantastic. Jay, you always come up with a great last story. Um, yeah. well, yeah, I mean, this is, this is good for everybody. It is. Uh, so, well, okay. Now, now time to fess up. Do you pick up food personally? If food falls oh, yeah. on the floor? Oh, pff. I, dry food I work well I, I know you I'm assuming you do too because I mean you you work outside yeah yeah I've, I mean your, your hands get dirty I right mean, yeah I, I've eaten true. a sandwich with oil on my hands I mean <laughs> yes yes I've done that before as you're sitting there finishing the last bite of sandwich you realize there's a lot of uh, black grease uh, on it from from servicing a you know an implement and you're like huh and you know, anyhow. a little bit of hydraulic oil just adds to the taste. <laughs> it, it does actually hydraulic oil. It doesn't taste as bad as diesel fuel. Just no. For the record, if if yeah, if it, anybody was wondering, it, um, if you had that choice, um, hydraulic oil is not as bad. Gear oil, on the other hand, gear oil is nasty. Stay I would like me. to say that I don't really ever get sick, so <laughs> I'm doing something right. Exactly, Jay. You need to you need to drop more food and stay healthier. That should be the new. Well, slogan. I just need to. I just need to do. I need. To, I need to get like a PhD or something so I can say like Dr. Jason Schneider says. I will see if I can find a place. Your hands is actually okay. I'm going to see if I can find a place online that I can get you a degree. Well, that'd be, yeah. yeah that'd, I mean, I'm not that'd be great. Next year for CES on your badge, you could be a Dr. Schneider. <laughs> well, okay. I like <laughs> it, it has a good ring to it. It does. All right. Well, coming up next week, uh, well, this coming week, we're going to actually have, going to finally get around to that ZTE uh, Axe and Phone review. That full review is going to be up. There's already the video, the overview on YouTube. So if you watch the BCC Hardware channel, you can check that out. We'll have a lot more samples and everything up on bcchardware.com later this week. Uh, we'll get that one up as well as we have other stuff, uh, uh, Rocket Mouse and uh, Roku 3 and more. Make sure you stay tuned to BCC Hardware for all of that. Jason, thanks so much for joining once again. We will see you next time, sir. See you next week.